I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye a sock blank. We're going to kettle dye it, and we're going to dye it in a few different layers. Yes, we are going to kettle dye a sock blank three times in three different colors to see what kind of yarn we end up with. I have kettle dyed blanks in the past with dyed mixtures, knowing to get some kind of glaze effects, and that worked amazingly well. And I've also taken yarn and dyed it in three different layers, three different colors, and compared that to yarn that I dyed when I mixed all the colors together. And by using one color in each layer, you get each tonal layer, because there's some unevenness to it, sort of is applied to the yarn a little bit differently. So therefore you get more colors overall, because when you have an uneven blue layer and then an uneven pink layer, some areas will look more blue, some more purple, some more pink. I'm mega, mega, mega excited to do this on a sock blank uh, because I think that it could be really, really cool. This is a Knit Picks Double Stranded Stroll Sock Blank. It is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and it's a double stranded blank, so there's two 50 gram balls of yarn knit together to create this yarn. So whatever patterns we get, we'll end up with a matched pair of yarn that could have sibling socks in a very great way once the yarn is unraveled. It is pre-soaking in some water that had two tablespoons of white vinegar in it because I set this up for another project. Normally, I don't pre-soak my yarn in acid unless I am going to use an application where I don't have acid in with the dyes that I'm going to be adding. But it doesn't hurt to have the acid in here. It just might mean that the colors will strike a little faster on the first layer because we already have acid on the yarn. The three colors that we will be playing with today are three secondary colors, but pre-mixed colors from Dharma. Uh, these are Dharma Acid Dyes in Blazing Orange, Emerald Green, and Royal Purple. And I mix these all at a 1% stock solution strength with one gram of dye per 100 milliliters of liquid two days ago. And they haven't been covered, so some evaporation likely has happened, but they were originally mixed at 1%. Now I use these colors to do a triad color mixing video, which may not have come out yet. And that yarn is currently drying. So I also have not seen the finished dry yarn to look at the finished ratios, but I will say they blended super, super beautifully. What I would like to do today is use these three colors at a one to one to one ratio uh, because I hadn't haven't done that yet and I would like to see that. Because even in the triad color mixing, we had points where we looked at each color at a two parts, one color, and then one part of the other two, but never quite the one to one to one. So we're gonna try that today and we're gonna be using 15 milliliters of the respective dye color uh, at a time. For a total depth of shade, of I guess about a 0.45%, which is pretty close to what I had used in that other video. This is a dye bath I just used on another video. It started off with 16 cups of water and four tablespoons of white vinegar. And I expect that's pretty much where we still are. I don't think we've lost a lot of volume. The dye bath is warm. I don't think it's hot anymore, but it is still warm. And I just brought in 15 milliliters of the blazing orange. And I'll turn the pot back on. What I do know from all the dyeing I've done with these colors thus far is that the blazing orange is the least pigmented. It is gets overwhelmed by the purple and green really, really quickly. <laughs> but now I'm gonna bring over my sock blank, which is a bit crumbled up, and just plop it on in. It's funny, I don't often, I mean, I often dye sock blanks when they're crumpled up, but I don't often try to dye them a little bit unevenly intentionally. I feel like it's a lot more frequent than I'm trying to keep it even with some dip dyeing or something. So I don't know. But anyway, I am going to leave this in here until the water clears. Uh, maybe we might want to add more acid. I'm not sure. But... 
you know what? I have the cover. We may as well cover it as well. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to come peek back in in about 10 minutes and we'll decide if we need more acid. It's been 10 minutes and ooh, we're bubbling. I really never cover my pots. All right. And I'd say almost all the color is in our yarn. And as you look at it, you can see lighter patches and deeper patches where the color is a little bit less even. So I'm now going to remove the yarn, drain off some of that liquid, and we're gonna set it aside. It doesn't need to cool exactly, but we're gonna set it aside as I put my gloves back on to get the next color. Okay, and now we're coming in with about 15 milliliters of the royal purple. And I'm doing this color next because I think the green takes the longest to absorb of all of these colors. But look at how dark this is. And now even though things are still hot and very steamy, I wanted to show off just the bit of this random tonal variation that we have here on our orange. And we are going to sort of scrunch things up like so to go into the purple. And I'm not stirring a ton. I could stir more, but even as we add this in, oh, let me adjust. We already see more purple patches and more orange patches, just how it is set up. Now, once again, I think we'll wait about 10 minutes and then see where we are. If there's a hint of color left, I'll proceed to the next color. If not, then maybe we'll add some acid. We'll see. It's been a little more than 10 minutes and I'm gonna wait for us to get a little less steamy. It's like when I can see the steam on the camera lens. It does look like that all of the color has cleared and it's so funny. This looks like it's like a, almost like a sports team jersey right now because of how much orange and purple we can see in different places. That purple struck pretty quickly um, onto our blank. I wonder if I'm going to end up liking the final color <laughs> or not, depending on how things continue to blend. Now, I will say I loved all the colors when I mixed these three colors together previously. So I'm optimistic, but that's five, 10, 15 milliliters. Which will stir up. The reason why I'm hesitating a little bit right now is because the colors feel so separate versus blended on here. And so therefore, when we add the green, I don't know what the coverage will be like. And we're very, very steamy. And so not knowing what the coverage will be like means that, you know, we've got some dramatic shifts in here. But I also wanna add, I didn't stir things very much with the purple round. And so I think when we add the yarn, I'm gonna stir it more. Cause I think the orange round, we got a lot of coverage. The purple round is a bit uneven, which I think is fine, but I want, I don't know, I want to see more of all of what this does. So I think, I think I made a little mistake by not stirring like I'm stirring right now. I added it, but then that, the result I think was a little bit more like when you do twisted skeins and you have resist, because there was resist in how it was folded. And so I should have moved it around, but we'll see what we're gonna get uh, after this stage. So I'll return in approximately 10 minutes. Let's see ooh, ooh, how we're doing. I can't tell much of what's going on with the color. It's looking, um, it's looking pretty. There's almost gonna be like a camo feel to it because it's the purple. There was too much of the purple in spots. But I think it's still pretty. It's just a little different. I should have stirred it. I should have stirred it. Oh, well, we'll try this again sometime and maybe do primary colors. But ultimately, layering three secondary colors is similar to layering three primary colors because ultimately you have a combination of blue, yellow, and pink, no matter what you're doing. 
uh, but these happen to be pre-mixed and so I don't think we've got primary pigments. We might ha there might be some pigments that are orange and green in there in addition to the mixes. Uh, but I do want to add some more acid because we're at our final stage. That's one, two, three heaping tablespoons of white vinegar. Uh, I think I just did 10 minutes before. We want to have at least 30 minutes from the last time we added dye, but that little bit of green in there, that happens with this color. So anyway, I'm gonna wait 20 minutes and we'll be back. All right, it has been 20 minutes and it's hard to say color-wise what's going on, but certainly it, this definitely will feel very camo, I think, to me. You can feel the more like orange, almost brownish green sections and some that are a little bit more purple. Uh, I think it'll be really pretty and unique. Just, I, again, I should have blended the orange out more. There's a hint of green left in the pot. I'm not gonna worry about it. And I'm debating. Uh, I'm debating if I wanna leave the blank in here to cool, but actually, I wanna film a leave no dye behind video. So I'm gonna remove the blank. And ultimately, so you may wonder why sometimes I leave yarn to cool in a pot. Sometimes I wanna absorb the little bit of color left. Sometimes because I don't need to put the yarn anywhere else and I may as well leave it in the pot. And sometimes I remove it because I wanna use the pot for something else. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing today. But I'm gonna set this aside to cool and we'll take a closer look when we wash it. But right now, I'm loving it so much more uh, than I did when I saw it in the liquid. It's really cool. Let's wash our sock blank, but also take a little bit of a closer look. I mean, you can definitely see where we've layered the colors. I'm really excited to see it dry. And again, I'm still like, oh, I should have stirred. When I'm doing tonals, like the three colors in a bucket thing for Hanukkah and stuff like that, I stir it so it's even more subtle. But it's still fun, and it'll turn into fun variegated socks. I think the color is fun. It's just, I, I, I Rebecca did the experiment. <laughs> Is that a thing we're gonna say now? No, I don't wanna be too hard on myself, but sometimes you have an idea and you kinda go where it takes you and other times you're like, oh, I didn't quite do what I meant to do. But I'm not seeing any color bleeding and I had added dish soap, so that's really, really good. Uh, so now I'm gonna rinse, rinse. So now I'm gonna rinse out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer to remove some of the water, hang it up to dry. And let's take a closer look at the blank and the actual colors we have here. Okay, okay, hear me out. I definitely needed to have stirred this more uh, in some of the stages because I sort of forgot that I wanted to get an even-ish coverage of each layer of color versus getting like a more full-on sock blank tonal layer. But this is still really pretty. At one point, I had a lot of doubts because I was afraid it was going to feel too camo, but I feel more like forest vine kind of feel in here. I love that you can pick out still some of the orange and the purple in addition to the green. The green definitely spread the most. Overall, I would call this a green blank with hints of purple and orange, but I love the way the colors combined. There might be a couple areas that feel a little bit more brown, but I'm still pretty amazed by how much I feel each of the individual colors in here. But what more stirring would have done would have made some of these purple sections less harsh. I'm filming these conclusions maybe a month after I dyed it, and so I might not be remembering correctly, but looking at this and the more uh, concrete purple areas, my hypothesis is that the purple is the color I did not move around as much. The wrong side of the blank looks very similar to the right side. But what is fun and potentially a little hard to imagine is while there is a bit of pooling of colors here and a little bit of smoothness between them, things are gonna feel much more variegated, a little bit more stripey kind of, once this is unraveled and then re-knit and crocheted into something. Because of just the way that these colors play together and at a different gauge, they'll play together in a different way as well. I am curious. I think there's some modeling in here. 
As I pull this apart, you can see that the color in between those stitches is lighter, which means that where we're seeing this purple, it's sort of gonna be interspersed with some more pastel areas, which is a really fun thing to this overall yarn. So now let's say you're gonna knit with this, but you don't want to have it feel stripey. You don't wanna feel micro stripes in there. One way that you can blend the colors further is if you do some kind of garter stitch project or instead of the right side of the stockinette being the knit side, you let the right side be the purl side. Because whenever you knit up uh, stitches, the purl rounds blends them together a little bit more already. And so that will make things feel a little bit less stripey, a little bit more random. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and would you like to see me do this again? And if so, what colors should I layer? When I've done layering, and I don't know why I always pick three, I often pick three layers. Maybe that seems reasonable, uh, but I've done three primary colors. I've layered on three of the same color. I've layered two colors. Uh, I like this way of layering colors onto the yarn versus mixing it in advance. I like that additional depth that we get. And so if I'm going to do this again, we could do a side by side where I combine all the colors and dye the yarn that way and versus layering them on like this. However, uh, from the last sock blank video that I shared here on this channel, a mixture of the green and purple broke in a very, very stunning way. And so if a color breaks, then it might end up feeling a little bit more like you layered the colors together. And so that's just something that I should throw out there. But I'm excited to play around with this more. Thank you so much for watching.